Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make sodium silicate. Uh, it can be used for, or it can be used as a, a high temperature adhesive or binding agent in cements and things like that. That's what uh, I'm going to be using it for. This is going to be part one of two videos. This will be the chemistry portion of how to make sodium silicate. And part two, I will be showing you how to make um, pretty much a brick mix with this so that you can make your own um, refractory cements for foundries, um, heating mantles like in my other video. The other video is more basic with the drywall compound. This is more high end. So anyway, you only need three ingredients silica gel it's the little beads that you get when you're buying uh, leather leather wallets and things like that packs boxes of shoes comes in little packets so you need silica gel and sodium hydroxide you don't need a stir but um, it helps significantly anyway I've pre-measured out 100 milliliters of distilled water I have 40 grams of sodium hydroxide and I have 60 grams of silica gel. So to start with, uh, you want to dissolve your sodium hydroxide in your water. Most people say when you're dissolving sodium hydroxide in water to do it slowly. Obviously you don't want it to boil over and splash on you, it's very caustic. Um, it'll burn your skin and things like that so you want to be careful. Uh, but I actually add this quickly because I want the water to boil. I actually want it to heat up because I'm going to be boiling it near the end anyway. So if it starts to boil now, it's not a big deal. Just keep in mind I'm using a flask that's well in size that it should not boil over. I should actually be using one a little bit bigger, maybe a 500 milliliter, but this will do. So you want to start by adding your sodium hydroxide to your water. So I got 40 grams sodium hydroxide, 100 milliliters water. It's on a stir. This is actually cold water too. So it helps to keep the boiling down a little bit. So we'll go ahead and add that. You're gonna to wanna to let that stir. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the fume hood at this point. This reaction can give off some pretty nasty fumes, so this should be done in a fume hood or outside, at least in a well-ventilated area. So I added about half of the sodium hydroxide at first. It seems pretty well dissolved so far, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the other half. We'll go ahead and let the rest of the sodium hydroxide dissolve into the solution before we start adding the silica gel. When you add the silica gel, it's gonna heat the mix as well. So you're going to want to add that slowly as well, but at the same time, you don't need to add it piece by piece. I do it in a quarter at a time and let the reaction start and kind of slow down a bit in between. It should be pretty well dissolved. I'm going to go ahead and start adding the sodium, or sorry, the silica gel. So like I said, I started with uh, about a quarter to a third of the amount. And we'll let that dissolve a little bit. We'll go ahead and add the rest of the silica gel.
right, so I've been letting this heat up for a little while. It's at 100 degrees Celsius, it's starting to boil. As you can see, now you can continue and you can let this boil until the bubbles get thick. They'll get to like a, like a thick syrupy bubble. <clears throat> you can take it off right now if you want. This is what I'm going to do. Is what uh, the next recipe is going to call for anyway. When I use this stuff in the next video to make a cement, or sorry, a brick. I'll be using it just as it is right now. Boil a little bit, but you can boil this for another 15 minutes if you wanted to to get the volume down and get the concentration up. But like I said, I won't be doing that. If you bear with me for a second. This is what I'll be making in the next video. This is a broken piece that I was testing the strength. It's really, it's solid. It's not like the drywall stuff. You can break it, but it's hard to break. So I'll be showing you guys that stuff. Also, this can withstand some crazy temperatures. I've had it glowing red, pull it out still hard as a rock. The neat thing about this stuff is you can actually cure it with carbon dioxide gas so you can make a shape, whatever shape you gotta make or form it into the inside of your foundry or whatever and then you just pump it full of carbon dioxide and let it sit for a little while and the, the brick will actually cure slightly so it'll hold its shape and then you can go ahead and fire it and it will get its full strength. But anyway, back to the uh, sodium silicate here. This is pretty much done. So I have another flask here. I'm going to try to demonstrate this. But We can pour it inside of the camera here. Now if we watch these last few drops, you can see they're starting to freeze up. See how that? So that's how you know you have concentrated sodium silica. Silicate, sorry. Um, uh, like I said, watch for my next up and coming video. And we'll be using this to make a um, fire brick or a masonry cement, or sorry, a refractory cement, high temperature bricks, whatever you want to call it. But keep in touch. If you like this video, click thumbs up. Uh, it helps out that way other people looking to do this stuff they'll find this video the more thumbs up you have the closer you are to the top of the search list and don't forget to comment rate and subscribe thanks for watching